Hello everyone, welcome back to the series of tutorials on C++. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about IO basics in C++. Till now, you have done a lot of programming in C++ and I hope you are already aware about these operations. So in first, we are trying to input a variable and in another, we are trying to output a variable. I hope you are already aware about this thing that both these C in and C out are object of some of the classes which we are going to discuss in a moment and these two are variables which are defined by user and then there are two more things these arrows which are some operators C++ standard libraries provides an extensive set of input output capabilities and now we are going to discuss a range of capabilities that will be sufficient for performing most common IO operations C++ uses type shape IO which means that each IO operation is executed in a manner sensitive to the data type and these operators that we have seen here are overloaded to accept data types of specific types if unexpected data is processed various error bits are set which the user may test to determine whether an IO operation is succeeded or not right so basically we have some error bits set for that now let's talk about the way C++ perform IO operations so IO operation in C++ is basically performed in streams which means we have some sequence of bytes which are called streams clear in input operation the byte flow from a device like keyboard disk drive or network to the main memory and in output operation the byte flow from main memory to the device and device could be display screen printer disk drive network etc you can also understand it from these operations like we have c in and variable here and in this case we have c out and variable so c in is connected to these devices and c out is connected to these devices right and when we are talking about variable we are talking about main memory right so in case of input you can see that data is flowing from this direction to this direction that is towards main memory and in case of output you are seeing that data is flowing from main memory to these devices and here is this arrow or direction of arrow which is showing the same so you can basically understand or you can remember this thing by flow of data from direction of these arrows right so i hope now you are aware about of the flow of the data right so that's how the data flows from devices to the memory and main memory to the other devices an application associates meaning with the bytes the byte could represent characters raw data graphic images digital speech digital video or any other information an application may require the system io mechanism should transfer bytes from device to the main memory and vice versa and this process should be consistent and reliable right so io mechanism provides us all these facilities now let's talk about the low level and high level io that c++ provides us so in case of low level io the io is unformatted whereas in case of high level io the io is formatted due to this unformatted io the transfer is of high speed and high volume but it is not very convenient and if we talk about formatted io this is sufficient or satisfactory for most io other than high volume file processing so for high volume file processing you can use low level io operations clear in case of low level io each individual byte is of interest like we have number of bytes but in case of low level io we will focus on each byte specifically all right but in case of high level io these bytes are grouped together to form the meaningful information or meaningful units such as integers characters strings or any other user defined data types the one problem with unformatted io is that uh, it could lead to portability issues because it's not portable across all the platforms so basically for most of the operations you can use this high level io right now let's talk about classic stream and standard stream in c++ in the past c++ stream libraries enabled input and output of characters because the care normally occupies one byte 
it can represent only a limited set of characters. However, many languages use alphabet that contain more characters than a single byte. So we could have characters which are of more than one byte. The ASCII character does not provide these characters. ASCII can represent this which are having only one byte. But for these which are having more than one byte, we need Unicode character set. And these are basically 16 bit characters. C++ include the standard stream libraries which enables developer to build systems capable of performing I operations with Unicode characters. And for this purpose, C++ includes an additional character type called wcar underscore t which among other uses can store Unicode characters. The C++ standard also redesigned the classic C++ stream classes which processed only cares as class templates with separate specialization for processing characters of type care and wcar underscore t respectively. Right, so I hope you understood this that characters can only represent one byte or you can say ASCII characters but C++ standard stream provides us Unicode support using this wcar underscore t. Clear? Now let's discuss about some iostream library headers. So now we have multiple library headers available. One is iostream. So this header declares basic services required for all stream I operations. It defines C in, C out, C error and C log objects. So this is a standard input stream. It's a standard output stream. C error is unbuffered standard error stream. We'll understand the meaning of unbuffered later. And C log is buffered standard error stream. And there is another header file which is iomanip. It declares services useful for performing formatted IO with so-called parameterized stream manipulators such as setw and set precision. And we are going to study about it in later part of this tutorial. Third is fstream and this header declares services for file processing. Okay, now let's talk about stream input output classes and objects in more detail. Okay, so till now you have seen that we have seen for taking the variable as input and see out for printing something on the screen. And both the things are available under iostream header file. The iostream library provides many basic template for handling common I/O operations. For example, we have class template basic iostream. It supports stream input operations. Then similarly, we have another template basic o stream, and it is used for output operations. And then if you combine both of them, we have basic I/O stream, and this is used for both input and output stream operations clear so each template has a predefined template specialization that enables the character input output in addition the input output stream library provides a set of type depths that provided aliases or we can say synonyms for these template specializations so let's understand type depth specifier which declares aliases for data types and it will create a shorter and more readable type name so you will understand this thing in a moment let us suppose we write type def and then write card star card ptr. So basically we are writing this card ptr which is easier to remember instead of this whole thing. Right. So this is a shorter and convenient. Right. It saves us from writing card star multiple times. And similarly for all these things we have type defs definition. So when we have type def for this basic i stream its shorter version is I stream. Similarly for basic O stream, shorter version is O stream and for this we have I stream. Clear? So it means type def I stream represent a specialization of basic I stream that enables care input. Similarly type def O stream represent a specialization of basic O stream and type def I stream represent a specialization of basic I stream and it enables both care input and output. Clear? Okay, now if you look at hierarchy of standard IO template, it looks like this. So we have template at the top, basic iOS, and there are two classes that are derived from this. One is basic iStream, and another is basic underscore OStream. So this is for input and this is for output. And if you do multiple inheritance here, we are going to get another class which is used for input and output right so short form of this is i stream which we normally know then this is o stream and here we have i stream clear 
so here in all these operations when we have again c in variable and c out variable operator overloading provides a convenient notation for performing input and output so here this left shift operator is overloaded to designate stream output and this is generally known as stream insertion operator and right shift operator is overloaded to designate stream input and it is referred to as stream extraction operator and these operators are used with the standard stream objects like c in c out c error and c log right and you can also use them with usual defined stream objects so here in this case when we are writing c in stream extraction operator and variable the compiler determine the data type of the variable and select the appropriate overloaded stream extraction operator and we assume that variable has been declared properly the stream extraction operator does not require additional type information this operator is overloaded to input data items of fundamental types like string and pointer values similarly in this case when we are writing c out stream insertion operator and variable name it causes the variable to be output from memory to the standard output device okay now we have these two things one is c error which is called c error and another is c log we already talked about them that c error is called unbuffered standard error stream and c log is called buffered standard error stream this c error is an o stream instance and is said to be connected to the standard error devices and normally it is a screen and here output to the object c error are usually unbuffered implying that each stream insertion to c error causes its output to appear immediately so it is not stored anywhere right so this is appropriate for notifying a user promptly about errors whereas c log is buffered and is basically stored in some memory before it is sent to the output screen clear so this causes output to be held in the buffer or we say can say area in the memory until the buffer is filled or until the buffer is flushed buffering is basically an input output performance enhancement technique and this is basically discussed in operating system course and we are not going to get into detail of this here next thing we have here is file processing templates c++ file processing use template like basic if stream for the file inputs basic of stream for the output and if you want to use both of them together you can use f stream for the input and output so basically there is a difference of f here and all the things are almost similar that we have discussed before so now using type def these things are made shorter for you so that you don't need to write this basic every time so these shorter versions are if stream of stream and f stream so all these templates inherit from some of the classes like this if stream inherits from the basic i stream class which we have discussed here right and basic of stream inherits from the basic o stream class and basic f stream inherit from the basic i stream so i will just draw all these things so that it's easier for you to understand how the hierarchy works so we have basic ios at the top there are two classes below this which is basic i stream and basic o stream the class that is inherited from both of them is basic i stream now we have classes for file processing one is inherited from here another is inherited from here one is called basic if stream and another is basic of stream and the class that is inherited from here is called basic f stream class so these are the classes in hierarchy and the full stream io class hierarchy provides most of the capabilities that you need now let's take some examples to understand how we can do output and input if you write like this you are going to output a stream but if you want to output a character you have to use a function put which is something like this so in this way you are going to output a character a you can also cascade this function like this so this is going to output a and followed by a new line you can also write something like this c out and 65 so this is basically sky value of a so this will print capital a clear other than this you can use c in to take input in a variable but if you provide a input something like this c++ programming it will take c++ as input and leave this 
because this this type of input reads until a white space is encountered and here is the white space clear so you can use some other functions like first you can create a buffer or you can say an array of some size right now i am creating a buffer of size 20 then you can use c in dot get and first parameter as buffer and then size 20 or maybe some other size so this reads the input and it will read c++ programming as full input but this reads the input into buffer and delimiter that is there and here in this case the delimiter is new line it remains in the string right so what is going to happen if you again write scene dot get after this or you write something like this scene operator and variable then new line will be read by another statement so doing something like this this is going to read new line right so what is the solution for this we need to remove it from the input stream and for that we can use c in dot ignore otherwise you can get unexpected output sometime right so this c in dot ignore is going to read and discard the designated number of characters another function that we have here is c in dot get line and you can pass same variable buffer here and 20 so this is almost similar to this function but this removes the delimiter from the input stream so it means either you can use this and this together or you can use scene dot get line right and both of these are going to read this whole statement clear you can write a program and check this thing right so i hope this is enough discussion for stream input and output operations in the next tutorial we are going to talk about stream manipulators if you have any doubt or query regarding any of these things, you can always write in the comments and I will try to respond back as soon as possible. So see you in the next video. Till then, thank you so much.